Are you ready for gigabit SpaceX Starlink? I know I am. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of fireside. That's it, that smokiness, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out. Talking tech, talking space, talking SpaceX, Starlink, lots of tech. Lots of tech, guys. So today is going to be a Starlink day. We're going to be talking about gigabit. Can you believe it? Gigabit. I said this would happen about two years ago. And people said, you know, it's not possible. That's just way, it's just too far. How is it going to be? How can we get gigabit from a satellite? I said, yeah, it's going to happen. Well, it looks like we're on the cusp. It's here. It is here. And I have some insider information that I've gleamed recently that I'm going to tell you by the end of this video about what is going on with this service. And today we're just going to go over it a little bit. What does this mean? What are the ramifications? I've read a few articles. I want to give you some of the information. Then of course, give you my commentary, but more importantly, I want to hear from you down below. So when you're done watching this video, let me hear what you think about all this in the comment area. And if you don't want to put something down there, throw an emoji down there. That would be very helpful. If you enjoyed the content, throw it a thumbs up. If you hate it, throw it a thumbs down. Either way, it helps out the channel a lot. And if you're not subscribed, consider doing so. And if you are, thank you. I appreciate that. Click the notification button over here so I go live when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you want to say thank you for all of my hard work on this channel, Right down here, YouTube gave us that thank you button. Click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And finally, if you want more SpaceX Starlink content, I've put together over 450 videos just for you. I'll put a link here, don't click on it yet. When you're done watching this video, click there and you'll see a bunch of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course the why behind all of it. So as I always say, the channel is all about the why, not just the how, but the why, because I personally think the why is more important. Anyways, let's jump right into this article, and then once again, I want to hear from you down below. SpaceX's Starlink upgrade, gigabit speeds on the way. SpaceX is gearing up to roll out a new Starlink dish that promises gigabit internet speeds, 1,000 megabits or more a massive jump from the 200 megabits most users are getting now. SpaceX hinted at this upgrade during a webinar for Starlink resellers. It's not just a tweak, it's a full leap forward that could make satellite internet on par with top tier fiber. I agree with that. You know, a side note here is, like I said, I talked about this many, many moons ago, over a year ago, and I said, you know, gigabit is going to come. All right, I think it's going to be here and it's probably going to come with the version 3 Starlink satellites. That's part of it, guys. So keep listening. The catch is that you'll need new gear to tap into these speeds. The current dishes can't handle the extra radio bands this upgrade demands. SpaceX is also refreshing its lineup, cutting the prices of its flat panel high performance version, that's its business class, from $2,500 down to $1,500, probably to clear stock for what's coming. I agree with that also. There's talk of a follow-up to the Starlink Mini too, though no one's spilled the details yet. What it will take to make this a reality. This isn't happening overnight. Two big hurdles stand in the way. The FCC to sign off on using more spectrum and SpaceX's Starship rocket needs to launch the third generation version three Starlink satellites. Sounds familiar, right guys? With over 7,000 satellites already in orbit, thanks to Falcon 9, Starship's the muscle for the next phase. Some news agencies say that late 2025 is the target, but after the Starship's March 6 test flight ending in an explosion, well, it could be longer. According to SpaceX, another Starship test flight is slated for May. If that flops, maybe this will be pushed back to 2026. 
the latest dirt and extra juice. Since this report, posts on X hint that SpaceX might prioritize business with this dish, matching their enterprise-first vibe. SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell dropped some gems in the webinar. Smaller beams, more capacity, lower latency. Very interesting. Starlink's subscriber count hit 5 million by March 7th, per SpaceX's own tally, up a million since October 2024. That's crazy, guys. Like six months or so, they hit a million extra people. That's amazing. Their Bastrop, Texas factory is cranking out 15,000 dishes every day and eyeing an expansion of 1 million square feet by the end of this year. Starlink's outage tracker on down detector shows a 99.9% .9 uptime average in 2025. So far, solid reliability to build on. Absolutely. 99.9% .9 uptime is what every single ISP strives for. And not all of them get there. And this is a satellite ISP and they are able to do that. That means a lot, guys. Trust me, from a system administrator, that means a lot why it's a big deal. This isn't just about bragging rights. Gigabit speeds could change the game for rural spots where fiber is a fantasy. Think farmers running smart gear or schools in the boonies getting real bandwidth. Real bandwidth, guys. Not what I was getting for a long time. Let's not get into it. I talked to you guys about it in the last video. The article finalizes with, Starlinks are ready in 125 countries. This could make satellite internet a go-to, not a last resort. Rivals like Viasat and HughesNet are complaining to the FCC about Spectrum. Of course they are. Proof, SpaceX Starlink is rattling cages. They're doing more than that. HughesNet and Viasat, like I said at the very beginning, they are out of business. And if they don't realize they're out of business, all right, they need to wake up, smell the roses, and cash it in because they're gone. What will probably happen, guys, is that they will end up selling out to the government. And those geocentric satellites, the geo position satellites of Viasat and HughesNet will most likely be used by the government. That's my prediction. We'll see if I'm right within a year when they're out of business. <laughs> It finalizes with the road ahead. SpaceX thrives on bold moves, rockets that land upright, satellites that blanket the globe, and this gigabit dish is their latest gamble. If the FCC signs off and the Starship blasts off, we're staring at internet that laughs at borders and boondocks. I agree. It's not guaranteed, setbacks could push it back, but if it works, it will be a giant leap towards linking every outpost one satellite at a time. I 100% agree. Good information. I'm going to give you a little bit more, but yeah, gigabit, guys, gigabit. What's interesting here is we're currently getting about 200, 250 megabits down. What I alluded to earlier is with AT&T and DSL and UVerse, I was getting 15 megabits down. So now we're getting 15, 20 times, right? I'm seeing anywhere between 250, sometimes I'll get as high as 320 megabits down, which is a lot, I know. I have a point of presence very close to me. My pop is unsaturated out of Miami, let's call it. So I'm also getting latency or pings at around 14 to 20 milliseconds. That is much better than most people, but still, there's a lot of people out there now getting 20, 25, 30 millisecond latency, which is great. And what Gwen Shotwell was talking about when she said that it's going to be smaller beams, more capacity, lower latency, that's exactly what it's all about. The beams are tighter. The latency is going to be better. The satellites are going to be closer, my understanding, and there's just simply going to be more capacity with these version three satellites. I said this from the very beginning. Now, the FCC, of course, is going to have to approve the extra spectrum that is required to be able to do this. But I think that they will. I think the biggest hurdle that there's going to be is getting the Starship into orbit. And that little Pez dispenser opening and the satellites being shot out 
They were supposed to do dummy satellites during the IFT-8, but it blew up before they were able to do it. So hopefully in May, we see that it makes it into orbit, or at least was able to open that Pez dispenser door and launch out some of those dummy satellites so that we know that they can do it. That would be awesome. What I also think is interesting is the plant, the factory in Texas, is putting out 15,000 Starlink kits per day. That is crazy. That's five, over 5 million, like 5.4. It's over 5 million in totality per year. That is a lot. And now they're looking at expanding it by a million square feet. That's going to put it at a grand total of about 1.7 million square feet, this factory. My question is, and maybe someone out there knows, will this extra million square feet be solely for SpaceX Starlink? So that we'll see, instead of 5 million per year, we'll see 10 million per year. Is that the case? Or will this area also be for Optimus, for their robot? I had this question for some time now, but no one has been able to answer me. Maybe one of you guys know the answer to that. Once again, we are here learning together. I'm not like some guru just talking down to you. Absolutely not. I'm learning as you are learning. The other thing is, is the whole idea of bridging the digital divide. And once we see gigabit, I mean, it's pretty much game over for the telcos, if you think about it, because right now they've been absolutely raping the public with all of these fees and fees and more fees, all having to do with bridging the digital divide, running fiber into nowhere, into the boonies. Well, According to what I reported on yesterday was that 85% of the boonies of the rural folks like myself are covered now by SpaceX Starlink. And if that is the case, there's only 15% left. <laughs> what are these telcos going to do? Because you know SpaceX Starlink is going to have 100%. It's going to be 100%, most likely by the end of this year. What are they going to charge us for? What is going to be all those line items? $5 here, dollar here, dollar 53, 246. All of these fees and fees and more fees. What are they going to put there? They're going to have to make up something. It's not going to be for bridging the digital divide. Making a bridge between the haves and have nots, the haves of high speed internet access and the have nots. I don't know, guys. I really don't know. But the competition is just absolutely hating it. Like I said, Viasat, HughesNet, they're going out of business. The telcos that have been once again raping the public for so long, they're gonna be in some serious hot water. Their revenue is going to go down. The Verizons, the AT&Ts, the Frontiers, all of these folks, right? Comcast, all of them. Now, like I promised you, I was gonna give you a little bit of insider information. Now, don't quote me on this because it could be wrong, but the source is pretty good, okay? And what is my understanding is that as of the end of last year of 2024, or the beginning of this year, SpaceX Starlink already has a Starlink satellite version three on orbit, maybe a few of them, that they're demoing, that they're testing, that they're squeezing them to see how much capacity they can get out of them. Once again, is this true? I think it is. And if that is the case, when we hear news like this of seeing 1000 megabits or gigabit connection right around the corner, I think it's true. I really do think that it's true. Now, we have to keep in mind that we are going to have to buy new equipment. And the equipment for SpaceX Starlink is not cheap. I paid $600 for mine. Some of you guys are paying $449. Some are paying $349. Some people are getting sales as low as $199 and even $149. Well, I paid $600. So this equipment, I have a funny feeling, will be very similar to the corporate or business class equipment. So don't think that you're going to be spending $600 bucks and getting gigabit because I don't think it's going to happen. Also, we did see in this article that they are lowering the cost of that business class dish from $2,500 to $1,500. It's a thousand dollar reduction. I said this was going to happen way back and now it's there. And I do believe it has to do with them making room for the new dish. 
and the new dish is going to be able to use the extra bandwidth, more spectrum, right? More bandwidth. So I would say that to get gigabit, now I'm speculating here. You can go back and watch me in a year from now and see if I'm right. I'm gonna say the gigabit's probably gonna be about $2,500. Same as the corporate plan is or was before they just dropped it by $1,000 to 1,500. I'm gonna say $2,500 is most likely the magic number. Now I don't know if this is true, but either which way, if you think about it, if you're getting a 99% or excuse me, 99.9% .9 uptime from a satellite company, an ISP, and which is the same or let's say similar to most ISPs, even terrestrial, ground-based, okay? Some of them can't even get 99.9, .9, but let's just say that is always the goal, 99%, 99.9% uptime. If you can do that from space, number one, and then you can get gigabit, they're gonna be very close to fiber, guys. Very, very close to fiber. And you're gonna have less opportunities of things or disasters, things happening on the ground to mess with the signal. There has been many people that have written into the show that said, listen, Joe, I got fiber and I shut down my Starlink, but now I just turned it back on because the fiber is flaky. It keeps going in and out, in and out. It's really, really good. And then it goes dead. And then it's really, really good. And that's the difference. Fiber is very much so like that. Fiber is ones and zeros. It's on or off. It's either working amazingly or it's kind of in the crapper, right? So SpaceX Starlink really doesn't have that problem. The only problem that SpaceX Starlink has is rain fade, weather, water molecules. That really hurts it. And of course, any type of obstruction. You need to be able to see the sky to be able to access those satellites. So, but either which way, this is going to just adversely affect many of the telcos out there. And Viasat and HughesNet, they're out of business completely. They're out. Once again, look back to this video and let me know if I was right or not. They're out of business. They were sold out to the government. Okay, this is uh, the future Joe prediction. Okay, so anyways, guys, I wanna know what say you. Is this something that you're interested in? Maybe it doesn't come in at $2,500. Maybe it comes in at $1,000. Would you get gigabit SpaceX Starlink if you could? Let me know down below. I wanna hear from you. What is that magic number that would allow you to say, yes, I want gigabit and I want it from a satellite? Down below. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, throw the video a thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all of my merch, my tees, my books, my shirts, everything else. If there's something there that you like, pick it up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected. Maybe gigabit connection. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.